again and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Each episode, we cover an aspect of sex that impacts your sex life and something that you can relate to. So if you find our discussions helpful, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We would love it if you would tell a friend about us. You can find us also on the web at foreplayrst.com. And if you have a comment or a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to us at info at foreplayrst.com. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Okay, it's just me, Lori, your sex therapist on a snowy day in Raleigh, North Carolina. Adam is tucked into his house with his children and his wife, not able to be with us today, which I dreadfully miss him and wish that he was with me. And I am feeling, frankly, a little insecure about doing this podcast by myself. But I'm willing to do it, and I'm going to talk with you today about arousal. Anna and Gary were a couple who came to see me, obviously not their real names, and they struggled with arousal. And so we're going to talk about what their struggle was and how to help resolve it. But in the meantime, I I wanted to read to you a letter, and thank you so much for the letters that you've been sending. We are now getting letters almost on a daily basis, encouraging us and giving us ideas for show topics and thanking us and telling us the difference that it makes in your lives. And I got to say that really keeps us going because hearing that we are helping you and changing lives is wonderful. And I wanted to read something that Dave wrote us. And thank you, Dave, for writing this. He says, howdy, Adam and Lori. I have an idea for a show topic that you might be able to use. It came about when my wife and I listened to your podcast on game theory. It got us thinking about how we have been feeling a disconnect sexually lately, brought on by our choices to either initiate or rebuff each other's bids for sex. Having a successful sexual encounter was occurring about as often as the planets aligning. Due to a plethora of excuses, we never seemed to want it at the same time. After listening to Game Theory, we knew what the problem was. We were voting red-red or red-black. It helped us tremendously to better understand where each other was coming from and to remember that we were both on the same team. Dave, I I mean, that makes a big difference. And he, he writes more about this. And if you have not listened to our podcast on Game Theory, please do, because it was a good one and we got a lot of response from it. But I, I think that just hearing that we have helped two people get on the same team, you know, just makes my day, makes Adam's day. And both of us, you know, are grateful for these letters of encouragement. So thanks so much, Dave, for writing in. And basically his, I I didn't tell you, but his idea for the show will be scheduled maintenance and how putting in energy into your marriage really makes a difference. And and we're going to do that one. But I just wanted to thank you again. So back to arousal. I had a couple come in to see me. They were in their mid-40s. Their names were Anna and Gary, obviously not their real names. But they were talking about the difficulty that she had with arousal. And I asked her to describe it to me. And she said, you know, um, we can be having sex. And I want to have sex with Gary. I love him. I think he's really attractive. I think his body is beautiful, you know. We have a good relationship, and when we start, and even though I'm going through the motions, we're kissing, touching, she says, I literally feel nothing. She said, I don't feel anything until much later, maybe 20 minutes into it, which, of course, those of you who have listened to me know that it's the 2020 solution, right, that most women don't catch fire until about 20 minutes in. But she was describing something that I think is so ubiquitous that I wanted to talk about it and drive home the point. And she said, I I just feel this envy, the way his body lights up and is on fire right at the beginning. And I asked him to describe it. He said, you know, and I'm quoting basically, it's a strong physiological urge. It's like pressure. And I said, is it genitally focused? And he said, oh, yeah, I, I feel it genitally focused. And he said, but I am always 
kind of pushed a little bit once we start the encounter and sometimes before, obviously. He said, it's not always like I'm I'm ravenous. He says, sometimes I just am aware that I'm hungry. But he said, I always feel it, not just in my head, but in my body. And I, I was thinking about this and I looked it up on Wikipedia, you know, the source of all good things. And it says that arousal is the physiological and psychological state of being awoke. Just so happens that my company name is Awakenings. Uh, And that was intended, you know, because on, on many levels, I'm trying to, and Adam is trying to as well, get people to wake up both sexually and in love to each other. But she said, you know, I, I maybe feel lubricated. And she said, I don't even feel the lubrication happen. So we might be able to have successful intercourse, but I personally am not awoken. And so I said, tell me about that. Tell me what you're thinking as you lie there and as you're going through the motions. And she said, that's just it. I am kind of just going through the motions. And she says, I hate to say it, but it feels like a chore sometimes, which I've heard from innumerable women. I, and I know that when men hear that, that can feel so dreadful to them, like, oh, I'm a chore on the list. But I think what she was saying is she's waiting, you know, in this kind of what feels like an eternity for her body to catch up to his. He's ready to have sexual intercourse. He's ready to go for it. She's nowhere in the universe close to that. You know, she is leagues under the sea, not ready yet to break the surface. And so she's waiting on herself. And oftentimes I think what what a woman does is she starts to watch herself which, of course, makes it worse. You know, she's saying it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening. And I'm thinking about how do we resolve this? Because this is so utterly common. This is not dysfunction. This is difference. Do you hear me? It's not dysfunction. It's difference. It doesn't mean that your wife or your girlfriend doesn't love you. It doesn't mean if you're a woman that you don't love him or that you've made the wrong choice or that sex is dead. This is really a difference in the speed of arousal. I I can't say it strongly enough, but it's sort of like the difference between turning on a gas stove and an electric stove and having the kettle boil. You know, with a gas stove, it's just instantaneous. And a man's body, it is really instantaneous. And it's physiological, physical, you know, embodied. And a woman, it's this mental idea that it like takes forever for her to become embodied. So what I mean by that is translating from the brain into the fire in her body takes a really long time. And it isn't just, you know, rub, 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 stroke, 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 hoping to, with the friction to turn her on. I think there is a way through this that couples can understand each other. I think the way through is that... We have to accept that our bodies are markedly different and that her body most of the time is going to take, you know, a massive amount of time to get there and that his body is not. And we have to make accommodations for that. I I really can imagine being male on the other side of it and feeling kind of the limp response from a female that is like, oh, You know, why can't she join me in this excitement? And the frustration that that must invoke in a male that is, you know, waiting for a body to come back to him with the same sense of physiological excitement, which also translates to psychological excitement. And then, of course, emotional closeness and excitement. So I hear you guys what you must be up against. But in order to get through this, I think you really have to know that it is a difference. We're going to come right back after the break and talk a little bit about some ways through this, you know, how we can help each other, how we can help each other through the long period of time that it often takes for a woman to get aroused, to help her and to help a male who is waiting on that with some frustration because there is frustration on both sides. So right back, this is Lori Watson, your sex therapist, without my buddy and co-host Adam Matthews who I miss very much. I'll be right back after the break. (music) 
So Adam, we're going to do a new thing. We are going to offer a link to Patreon on Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy, which is foreplayrst.com, yeah. for people who are really interested in helping us develop deeper, you know, more interesting podcasts and yeah. also offer resources to them. Yeah, Patreon is a platform where you can directly support things that you love. And we know that several of you have been real supportive of us, and we hope you would consider being financially supportive as well. Right, because we're running practices and families, and we need time really, to do more, something like a webinar. We'd like to do some worksheets for you. We really want to expand the resources that we can be able to provide right. to you as our listeners, dive deeper into the questions you have, offer more practical steps for you to have the best possible relationship. So we're looking for some patrons. We appreciate already the love, the emails that you send. All of that is great. So if you love listening to us, you can find out how to support us by going to our website, foreplayrst.com. Thank you so much for considering that. We appreciate it. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible hi i'm dr adam matthews and i want to welcome you to matthews counseling and matthews counseling we believe it is our job to come alongside you in whatever difficult challenges of life you are in and help you rediscover hope and to find the strength that you have to face those challenges. We believe in people, specifically that no two people are alike and therefore they need solutions that are unique to them. We strive to create a safe and comfortable place for you to explore who you want to be and identify the obstacles standing in your way. Oftentimes the first step toward finding help is the hardest, but it can also be the bravest. At matthewscounseling.net, we strive to help make the first step easy. There you will find our blog with some great resources from our therapist. You also find a link to our client portal where you can schedule directly with our therapist at your convenience. We offer free 30-minute consultations either in person or over the phone, so the first step is at no cost to you. Give us a call at 919-587-8018 or again, find us online at matthewscounseling.net. We look forward to working with you. Okay, I'm back. Lori Watson, your sex therapist for Play Radio Sex Therapy. The snow is getting worse out there. I just took a picture. And go look on my Twitter feed. If you don't know about my Twitter feed, I would love for you to join me. It's called Ask Lori Watson. And I just took a picture of the snow out here, which, of course, is laughable to my Canadian friends. But uh, And you'll see the roads are still clear. So I got plenty of time to do the podcast Get home to the fire. But as I think about this arousal problem, I'm thinking about like arousal on a Thursday night, right? I mean, I'm not talking about a night or a a day when you have all sorts of time and you're going to do the whole date thing and go out and the seduction and dress up and all of that. I'm talking about how do we have sex on a night when, you know, it's just an ordinary day and how do we bridge this arousal gap? So the first thing I would say is, and I've said this before, you got to connect. If I were a man, I would take a woman over to the couch and say, you know, honey, tell me about your day. And why don't you put your feet on my lap and I'll rub your feet because the feet are really an erogenous zone that is super sexy and super relaxing to women. And I would just rub her feet while she talked to me and let her download the day. One of the primary issues with women in terms of becoming aroused is her distractibility and that she has so much going on in her mind. So letting her give it to you, tell you about it is a great form of connection. And, you know, the other thing is she's getting it off her mind. She's getting ready for the next part of the evening. 
And I would say as a woman, this is kind of the way we need to bridge the arousal gap is learning how to focus and how to stop being as distracted. I mean, one thing is maybe, you know, putting your own phone down, trying to get done psychologically with the day, with your chores, with with all the things that are happening in your mind and saying, you know, I, I need to shift gears and give this a moment, give this attention to my partner, my husband or my boyfriend and really be present in the relationship. So I think as a woman, that's kind of your task um, because it's such a central part of coming into the sexual moment. You know, I had a guy say, but I'm so tired of this. You know, I don't want to do all this work. Why should I have to do all this work to get her aroused when, you know, I mean, that just feels like I'm always doing so much and I, I just want it to happen. And I'm like, you know what? You're married to a woman. And this is her body difference. If you want to help, if you really want to help her, I'm offering you ways that can help sort of lend her, if you will, the benefit of your testosterone. Because your testosterone is the physiological hormone that makes you able to have arousal at such a rapid pace. She doesn't have much of that. I mean, hardly any of that. And so you know, bridging this gap is really important, I think, to successful sex on a Thursday night. You know, make it romantic. Set the setting. Lay a fire before she gets home. Or bring home a special candle and just say, you know, I'm going to go light this in the bedroom. And why don't you come upstairs and, you know, when you're done with your email or whatever, and let's lay in bed and talk about the day. Do something that will help her senses because it's, it's reorienting her to the sexual moment. And this isn't much, right? It's lighting a match. It it might be going and taking a shower. It might be drawing a bath together. It's a change of state. Uh, Many times for people who call in and maybe they're in a panic attack or an anxiety attack, one of the things I tell them is go get a drink of ice water. It's the craziest intervention, but sometimes when we're having a panic attack, a change of physiological state can change the mind. It can literally slow down the mind. And the same thing happens with moving from an ordinary day into a sexual night is a change of physiological state. And we do that with sight, sound, smell, warmth, temperature. I have a friend who keeps his uh, house, you know, on a really low temperature to save money. Doesn't need to save money. This man does not need to save money. And I'm just like, that's crazy because his wife always complains about being cold. So so don't do that. So I would say as a man, I would definitely try to change the state and make it really simple. You know, put on some music, maybe get a drink. Maybe it's the couch or lying in bed. You know, and I know that many of you are in a difficult stage of life. You've got young children or you've got the worries of the world on your shoulder with, you know, aging parents. Uh, Maybe you're aging yourself and you have difficulties with your own bodies. And so all of this kind of plays into, you know, how do I move from the ordinary day into the sexual moment? But I think this helps all of us, right? It's, It's a ritual that says we're moving from one time of our day, one part of our day to another part. One of the things I did when the children were little was I always lit a candle on the table at dinner time, and this was sort of family time, and I I made sure that there was a centerpiece because I wanted us to sort of physically see that we were transitioning from our day and our responsibilities at school and at work into family time, and, and I have always kept that up. But it's the same sort of thing. Can you Can you design a ritual that says – It's our time. Not necessarily it's our sex time, but it's our time. One of the things I think about when I go to church is all the rituals that are involved in it. It's it's a time for, you know, reflection, a time for a minute to connect with something bigger than ourselves. And some of that is done by all the trappings of religion and the sights, the sounds, the smells of the service. You know, I, I'm Episcopal, so there's incense and light and candle and all that stuff. But, I mean, that helps, right? It helps our transition. So I would suggest that. 
I, I want to talk really explicitly, too, about how to touch a woman to increase arousal gently without overwhelming her. Don't go for the parts. You know, don't touch her breasts. Don't touch her genitals in the beginning. And this is quite a while. I mean, easy 20 minutes. So what are you doing? You're holding, you're stroking, maybe using the back of your hand to touch her, her inner thighs, not her genitals. But then I want to help you with how to touch her genitals. Starting at the top, the most sensitive part of a woman is the glands of the clitoris. So the tip of the clitoris, followed by the shaft of the clitoris, followed by the legs of the clitoris, which are directly underneath the labia, and then followed by the G-spot, which is the roof of her vagina. Basically, you're touching the nexus of nerves from the legs of the clitoris, but through layers of tissue. So it's not quite as acutely sensitive as the tip of the clitoris, certainly, or, or the other areas. So in terms of sensitivity, while the G-spot is less sensitive, it also includes penetration, so she might not quite be ready for that. So I think a good place to start is through pressure on her labia, not really touching her, her clitoris at all. Um, because you're touching the legs, you're you're applying pressure to touch the legs of her clitoris, then maybe touching the shaft gently of her clitoris, then eventually the glands of the clitoris with maybe a circular motion or something, and then maybe combining that with G-spot stimulation. But think of that process as taking 20 minutes. Okay, so what I just said in 20 seconds, think about doing that over 20 minutes when you actually get to genital touchy. Physiologically, you want to see if she has vasocongestion. That's puffiness. Lubrication really is not a great indication in terms of her own arousal. And women can be lubricated. They can enjoy pleasant, non-painful sexual intercourse and totally, totally not be subjectively aroused which may seem crazy to a man, but that's the truth. So I hope this helps you with bridging the gap in arousal. I know it's a lot of work. We have different bodies in terms of the gender, and I am just hopeful to help with arousal on a Thursday night. Thanks for listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. Really want Adam to be back here with me, and stay warm, stay hot. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. 